Hello, and welcome to Superhero Chat, a production of Bronco Television, brought to you by the Department of Communication at Fayetteville State University. I'm your host, Professor Jonathan Chestnut from the Department of Performing and Fine Arts. We have three panelists for today's show, Dr. Heather Griffiths, a returning panelist and a professor from the Department of Sociology, Ian Murphy, a returning panelist and an FSU alum from the Criminal Justice, a new panelist to our show, Michael Abner, another FSU alum from the Department of Criminal Justice. Thank you all for being panelists. Let's get started with our free talk discussion. As you can probably tell from our background today, uh, we're going to be talking about the new Superman movie, uh, Man of Steel, what we liked, what we didn't like, surprises, disappointments, and what we think of the future of this new storyline. Panelists? Well, uh, oh, Ian, please. As a whole, I actually, I like the movie. Um, there, they did change some things in it. You know, I did personally like that they didn't introduce Kryptonite in it. I'm glad that they didn't bring Lex Luthor in it because he's been in every one of these movies. There were certain things about it that I didn't like. I mean, the movie had plot holes in it. Why there was a suit on the ship, all these things for it. Why is it that, you know, at times Zod's armies had superpowers when they were wearing armor but only had access when they took certain pieces off to it. And just for me, I just enjoyed watching it, though. I thought it was entertaining. It, like I said, it had plot holes, but it didn't really take it away from it. But I'm also a Superman fan. A lot of the reviews I've read for it where people say they don't like it will openly admit to not liking the character as it is. And I think that does, you know, affect people's ratings on it. And I say it does affect my rating, seeing as how I like him. Well, and look, here, here's my whole thing. It was a good popcorn movie, right? Good summer action movie, fairly good story. But why are the villains so stupid? You know, they've got Superman's mom, right? Right there. Why not just threaten her? Superman will do whatever they want. They know Lois Lane. She keeps screaming his name, Clark, Clark, Clark. You know, and then they just leave these two extremely vulnerable human beings and just sort of fly off to do evil stuff elsewhere. I, I, I didn't, I must have missed something. Oh, there, at the very I, end, right? I, General I, Zod is standing there. <laughs> Superman's mom is on the floor ready to get lasered with his super laser eyes. Heat vision. And yeah. he's just sort of like, well, my work here is done. I'm going somewhere else. But I mean, that's kind of what they get in later in the film. I mean, it doesn't really matter yet yeah, if it, you know, you heard his mom. That's what actually drove him to fight at one point is when they kind of, I think, tossed her into a building or into a field or something like that. When they attacked the house, that got him angry. But just what drove him at the very end was just four random people. It, you, you could say it's his mother, you could say it's Lois, but he, his thing is about protecting people. And I, I get in this film they never directly touch on the fact that this is a Superman that doesn't believe in killing. But the overall you know, arc of this film to me was about him staying in control. That's what it is. He did show his powers, but every time he did do something with that, he left the location. And yeah, that's what led Lois to be able to find him. But I thought it was less at the end about you know, him trying, you know, oh, I killed somebody. That's what upset me. I think it was more about him finally losing control, him giving in to what he's always been capable of doing. I'm General Zod. I make a beeline to Superman's mom, and I use her to get what I want. But what, he's, did he, he's, what did he want from him? He, well, he wanted the Codex. But he had it. He knew the Codex. He'd already been told that the Codex was in. And they General that he Zod didn't wanted need. something from him, and then he needed Superman to get the Codex from his cells and his blood. And that was after he was told that he didn't need him alive anyway, so you don't need to bring him. He could have just killed him and did it anyway. And he drew, he drew him out by attacking the city, and then oh, after the ship was destroyed, not, he lost all his people. There was no real reason to not just wreak major havoc. I'm telling you, if I'm pissed off at Superman, I'm going to go kill his mom. Quick, simple, it's effective. We don't. He, he the did job that, done. though. They did that on Krypton. He killed well, his yeah. dad, and then Krypton blew up and killed his mom. Well, what did you think? You got the big ass on. <laughs> I thought it was a good movie. Not a great movie, but it had potential to lead to great things. Now, when you think about it, all these movies should be like that. Because Batman Begins was not a great movie, but it did lead to great things. Think about it. The story to Batman Begins was kind of weak and almost was the same exact story as Man of Steel. Yes. Mm -hmm. You gotta have some kind of threat to the city or world and you know Batman or Superman's gonna come in and save the day. And that's all there was to it. Yeah. But it leads to better things like you know other characters like the Joker, Bane, what have you. With this movie there was a lot of potential I will agree that some of the, mo the movie villains were stupid. Stupid as hell. Um, but I would also say that Superman was stupid. Oh, absolutely. There was, 
there was a part where General Zod, he was having trouble focusing because his powers were kicking in and he could hear the voices and everything. And Superman basically tells him, oh, all you have to do is focus mm -hmm. gave him the like way I did. Yeah. And I mean, if you have the advantage, don't ever give it up. And he did. Now, people complained that this was a darker Superman. It wasn't. Christopher Reeve was just as dark, if you think about it. They complained about him killing General Zod. Christopher Reeve depowered General Zod, crushed his hand, and then tossed him into a chasm into the Fortress of Solitude. But he could still be okay. He's... <laughs> he didn't yeah, actually see the body. He could still be okay. He, he's, he's gone. Okay, uh, he's, a, at that point, a powerless human being <laughs> yeah. thrown into the Arctic. Yeah. I give him, what, a day? All right, so what do you all <laughs> think about uh, Superman killing his dad? He didn't kill his dad. Oh, about through his stupidity? Him. Absolutely. He didn't, no. He, no. If you saw, Jonathan told him to stay back because he didn't want his son's powers exposed. That's how much he loved oh, his son. No, 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 no. Okay, he shouldn't have let his dad go out there in the first place. Knowing he has this little margin of invulnerability, he could have gone with less risk. And then but that's but what they kept kid. going through he the entire movie faster. about. That was what he kept going through the entire movie telling him, you can't expose yourself, you can't do anything like that. I mean, yeah, he could have had the tornado hit him and then it would move away, everybody's safe, and he's still standing there He had the plenty of time to go. Jonathan Kent got crushed because his foot got caught, and that wouldn't have happened to Superman. That Perhaps, but in every, every, in, even in the Richard Donner movie, Superman needed a reason to say to himself, with all these powers, and I couldn't save him. Yeah, they should have sucked with that version, because this one sucked. <laughs> it was no, 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 no. See, I, I think that it was the idea that his, his father was willing to make that sacrifice for him, that he saw mankind as too risky. And so we see this whole, how does man accept Superman? It's mm. bad writing. Uh, oh. They could have they <laughs> done that in another way. They could have done that in a better way. I thought the heart attack is sort of it's the act of God. He really, truly has no intervention at all possible. Uh, a tornado is not considered what? No, yeah, when John the dog dog is like there, <laughs> he, he goes back for the dog. He goes back for the dog instead of Superman running over there getting the dog or using his super high-powered, high-pitched whistle. It acts like a dog whistle. He could just whistle oh. for the dog. Yeah, right, yeah see, that's what is, Super Dog, what remember from the, the comics? No, that's, <laughs> see, you're starting to do what they did in those last movies where they just gave Superman any powers they felt like. The weird giant <laughs> cell <laughs> thing. I can look at, I can look at the writing. Great Wall of China and it rebuilds itself. Bad yeah. writing. Yeah. Telekinetic yeah. finger. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no. Uh, no, this was. I thought it was a. It was a solid movie. It, it sticks close to the Fifty Two Superman. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the costume thing. You said something about it. There was no real reference. There's no explanation to the costume. Um, but I think in the New Fifty Two, Superman's costume is what really lo lets him fly. Mm -hmm. It helps him direct the energy in a way that he can fly. That's why in the earlier books he doesn't fly. And so when we see Superman and he's traveling around doing all these things, he's really on foot. You know, he's jumping from location to location if he is jumping or he's trying to carry big distances. Um, so the suit was kind of a way to generate that. And the change of powers between them having powers and them not having powers. You know, if we were human beings and we found, we didn't know that we were, we'd get superpowers if we landed on Mars, we would take our atmosphere with us and go with us to... I just screwed up. You know, you could retcon the costume. It's Kryptonian technology. It was re replicated like it would be on Star Trek The Next Generation, and that's why it fit him so well. Yeah, it was a little surprising. I'm just talking about that it landed here on Earth like however long ago. It just so happened to be in those colors. It just so happened to have his family oh, symbol see, on I it. Didn't, it I didn't read it that way at all. I read it as he put in the, um, the thumb little, drive, yeah. <laughs> the Kryptonian <laughs> thumb drive, yeah. and that activated some stuff. So mm. once um, Kal-El is it no no Jarrell, sorry. Mm. Once Jarrell is in the picture, then he's controlling all the ship's functions. They establish that later on. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm in charge of this ship. That's why he waves his hand, opens up the doors and closes them. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean they could have had some sort of some replicator of technology. Yeah, because yeah, they had stuff like that. But I mean um, I thought it was I thought it was interesting just the um, the way they connected it through and made this whole new kind of structure. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, so we need to move on. Uh, thank you so much for the discussion. It's, it's time to answer some superhero questions submitted by our Facebook fans. Uh, the first one comes from Mike. He wants to know what the panelists think about Superman's new suit, in particular his missing red underwear. 
Thank God. <laughs> he, did, he didn't really need the red underwear. It just never made any sense. Um, I thought um, it was a nice update. It's like you don't need to put nipples on the bat suit. You yeah. don't need underwear on the Superman suit. Mm -hmm. it, it, for the movie, I kind of liked it. I thought it was still a little bit dark. I liked the bright costume and the bright colors. Uh, that was my problem with the last Superman movie, too. His suit was kind of dark. It looked brown. Um, hmm? It looked brown in some yeah. returns. I was like... Um, I mean, for the film, when I first saw it, I didn't like it. It started to grow on me, especially when you saw Zod in his, and it's kind of like, this is their Under Armour. It is basically them running around in their underwear. Um, for the comics, however, I'm still... I, I don't like the idea of super armor. It's something I don't see Superman as needing something that looks like metal or armor. I think cloth is one of the few that would work well for him, especially if they're going with the idea that it's Kryptonian. Mm -hmm. Well, I, see, I don't really mind the new, the new design. As I, you know, as a as an avid comic book reader, I've, my biggest problem with Superman has always been that he's too powerful. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the Flashner com Superman from the '30s and '40s, the animated series, you know they knocked him out with gas grenades mm -hmm. and things like. That. And he was a much more intriguing character because he his adversaries really stood an opportunity to beat him. But then, as time has progressed, he's become so powerful. What can a, what can Lex Luthor do, really? short of involving kryptonite and I hate every storyline that involves kryptonite um, because that's sort of a default kind of like well I can't be Superman any other way here's kryptonite magic and what's bad is they can't even figure out how strong kryptonite affects them between writer and writer you know well see that's always been sort of flexible yeah you know, that's always sort of been up to the writers um, and then I they like, started creating different colors I like the kryptonite that Richard Pryor came up with in Superman 3 oh jeez the one with, that was made with tar yeah. Yeah. That was that was from cigarettes. That was great. That, that, that's an anti smoking. That's inspired right there. Public service announcement, that whole movie. That, that whole that whole storyline arch after the the Superman two fighting the other Kryptonians, that one just went down the toilet. Um, that Thank the producers line. for that. Yeah, well, you know, that's what happens when comic book peop people are pulled out of us of writing the stories and mm -hmm. it's left up to just who left up to people who want to put their own little The South Kinds. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the South Kinds. So and actually, they really screwed up the Superman too because Richard Donner's version is completely different. It is. They yeah. did a ton of last-minute cuts in that. Yeah. yeah they were just like, well, I don't know anything mm -hmm. about the characters, but I'll just stick this in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our second question comes from Justin. He wants to know about the future of the DC franchise and Superman's place in the future Justice League movies. He's Thor, essentially. Now he can well, whip Thor around. Sorry. He, well, he, but still, he yeah. is the essentially he's Thor. But see, Marvel has put Hyperion in the in the Avengers, which is basically a version of Superman. Of Superman yeah. So there, yeah. Hey, I'll watch a sequel, but if they want me to invest in the Justice League movie, they need to come up with a decent Wonder Woman. Well, mm -hmm. I, I've heard Wonder Woman and Flash are the two big proposed movies to do next. Um, I don't really mind the idea of a Justice League movie. Um, you know, everybody always sings the praises of the Avengers movie. Mm -hmm. And um, while I enjoyed it, I didn't really think it was that great of a movie, because mm -hmm. it was basically, I mean, if, if you missed any of their movies, it wouldn't have made any sense, and it was like, everybody's mad at everybody, nobody gets along, which is, and then at the end, we're fighting a uh, faceless army that, coming from another dimension. I don't know. I did, it didn't really buy it. I didn't really get into it. I'm just worried with the Justice League movie, basically them trying to you know, follow Marvel too much. I was actually a little bit glad at the end of the movie, at the end of the credits, there wasn't some little teaser thing like Marvel's done in every no. one of these things. That's just something that people have come to expect. And WB has never you know, come out and said, we're directly working on the future of a Justice League movie. We're just sitting here... You know, they kind of hinted at that with Green Lantern, which didn't do that well. Mm. So why would you sit here, if we're, we don't know that Superman is a given yet, why would we, you know, hint that towards a Justice League movie? Plus, the Justice League isn't set up the same way as the Avengers. They weren't pulled together by some government thing. For them to do, in my opinion, a Justice League movie, you would need to bring in some type of big alien threat, and they would just need to kind of meet up, they would fight together, and then at the end, they would form the Justice League to it. That's exactly what happened in the 52. Yeah. In the new 52. Yeah. Um, uh, apocalypse attacks Earth. Dark side shows up, and it's a threat that none of the uh, the, Justice, <laughs> the, uh, the Avengers, the Justice League, can deal with. And so Green Lantern 
traces it, finds Batman. Batman and Green Lantern go find Superman. Superman beats the snot out of them, which is, would make for mm -hmm. a good, you know, two minutes in a movie. And then um, they bring Flash in because they can't keep up with Superman. And then Wonder Woman shows up and makes them all look silly. Yeah. And then Aquaman shows up with a big fish. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Demanding to be the leader. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so I, I think a Justice League movie is doable. I think people are interested in it. Um, w, Marvel and DC are interesting because when Marvel's making good movies, they make bad animation. They mm -hmm. don't control the animation. When DC's making good movies, they don't control the animation. And so it's kind of like who has, who has control of television can't make good movies. And right mm -hmm. now we've got Arrow. They just pulled Young Justice off the air, which I don't know why. I, yeah. Um, so, you know, maybe we'll see a transition back to uh, Warner Brothers making good movies with this one. Mm -hmm. Well, even their animated movies, you know, yeah. like uh, Justice League, uh, Doom, mm -hmm. um, you know, Superman, Superman Unbound. Batman, those were great. Yeah. You know, but their movies so far have just been kind of, aside from the Dark Knight trilogy, have been a little bit, you know, tepid. Yeah. Well, see, well, I haven't been a big fan, you know, I, I've got friends that throw things heavy at me for, for saying this, but I haven't been a big fan of the Batman movies. The last one uh, sucked. Yeah. The, I, there, were, there were plot holes you could drive a semi-truck through, like, you know, you can't get out of, you can't get into Metropolis or Gotham. Gotham, but Batman, who is on some, in some third world country just suddenly. That, um, that I'll give to him. Because he's Batman. <laughs> but he just shows up back in Gotham. Because he's Batman. He, but he can't teleport. I know that, but he's Batman. He has, no, and he has no money. He has no. You know, Could you say that line, but with the Christian Bale growl? Because I'm Batman. I'm uh, Batman. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm getting yelled at. Uh, our third and final question comes from Jason. What does Superman's killing of Zod change to Superman's myth? Of? Isn't he supposed to be opposed to killing? I mean, he's opposed to killing, but I mean, he's done it in the past. I mean, Christopher Reeve killed the crap out of Terrence Stamp. Yeah, and it's you know, and looking at you know, if you look at the animated movies and All Star Superman, he killed you know this big being. Well, All Star when, Superman. So. Yeah. Um, anytime, basically, it's almost like if it's humanoid, he has an issue killing it because if it's a giant monster or something, as long as he can somehow you know rationalize that this thing isn't technically alive, he'll kill it. Um, I don't think it really affects his mythos so much that he killed Zod in it. I mean, personally, do I wish he did find another way? That would have been nice. But as I said earlier, I thought it was more about this is him losing control. That's him. That's why at the end he had that breakdown and all that. So, you know, in the future, they could still work around the idea that he doesn't like killing. I mean, if you throw in Lex Luthor, what is stopping Superman from killing him? Kryptonite or Kryptonian atmosphere or something like that. But... You know, I think that says a lot about him is that he has the capability to kill any villain he wants to. The trick is is to find a way that he can get around doing that. No, no, no. I'm far more concerned about the countless civilian deaths involved in this film. Yeah, Thank they you. Never they tear they didn't New York. Touch any of the collateral and damage to Metropolis. You know, Metropolis. I gotta tell you, sorry, they tear up Metropolis and then instead of immediately going in to save survivors. Superman stops to smooch Lois Lane. How many people died in those seconds that he could have saved? <laughs> but what did they do in Avengers when the city was destroyed? Yeah, they went to Shawarma. They went to Shawarma and then Tony started working on the tower. That was all well, they did. Selfish, selfish <laughs> creatures. <laughs> well, see, this Superman killing is not really a new thing, yeah. especially him not killing, him killing Kryptonians. It's yeah. not a new thing. In uh, the John Byrne series in the 80s, he was pulled to another dimension where three Kryptonians had been brought to Earth, and they had wiped pretty much everybody out. Mm -hmm. And there was a small population left, and so he went and got kryptonite and literally executed them, held the kryptonite out and said, as the last living kryptonian um, uh, a, a, a legal authority, I hereby execute you under kryptonian law. And he held kryptonite out and let them die. Um, and so I looked at the whole killing of Zod, not to dislike that, because you know, his father had already explained to him that they had been, you know, they were genetically created into caste. Mm -hmm. And so the, and Zod had told him, I am a soldier. I am on mission. I am a, and, and now all of Zod's troops are gone. Everything that Zod believes in is gone. That's a desperate man right there. He's, mm -hmm. he's, he has nothing to lose and all the power in the world. And all he wants to do is wreak havoc and destroy. He wants others to suffer. Killing him was almost an act of mercy. 
you know, everything he wanted, everything he dreamed about doing was done. And so here's this genetically created super soldier that's just going to disintegrate everybody. I would also say there's a bit of like a, a difference between the way Christopher Reeve dispatched General Zod versus um, Henry Cavill. He was threatening human lives. There was an urgency to stop him. And the only way to stop General Zod was to, you know, that's the only thing he could do. Oh, and it really upset him, too. You could tell mm -hmm. by the con yeah. right yeah, the after. Con, yeah. But uh, he didn't have he didn't have the Phantom Zone and like the, he didn't, the yeah. Christopher Reeve man he had wiped out the guy's powers he was human at that point he could have turned him over to the authorities yep. to be prosecuted like he does with Lex Luthor mm -hmm. yeah like mm -hmm. he, and because now this guy is he this, they've done all kinds of damage to Metropolis you know. Uh, so all right, so we're we're about a minute over so uh, great discussion <laughs> everyone that includes our eighth and final show for this season. Thank you all for being a part of Superhero Chat Adventure so far. We would like be, we'll be back in the fall with some more episodes. Uh, send in your questions, your ideas, what you want to see. A big thanks to our panel panelists, Heather Griffiths, Ian Murphy, and Michael Abner. I'm your host for Superhero Chat, Jonathan Chestnut. Remember, you don't have to be a super. You don't have to be super to be a, to be a hero. Check us out on YouTube and Facebook at Bronco Television. Till next time, take care. <laughs>